Hey, what's going on everyone? So uh, I landed in Las Vegas late last night. Uh, I do work luckily like 100% remote. So I do have the flexibility to kind of work wherever I want. And um, in this kind of video, I wanted to cover like what to do when you're traveling in terms of maintaining your like mental and physical health goals, because that oftentimes could be like really challenging. And luckily the setup I have here is quite easy because I'm basically just kind of staying at my parents' place and working in one of their extra rooms when I do have client calls. Uh, but a lot of the stuff that I talk about here, I also made work when I was traveling uh, abroad quite a bit, kind of like in Japan, China, India, uh, a lot of countries in Europe, et cetera, et cetera. So it's able to work and I'm just gonna give a few tips of kind of what's worked for me over the years and how I set everything up. So uh, in this particular situation, I'm obviously staying at my parents' place and they actually have like a community gym, uh, which makes it super easy. Uh, it's not like, it actually is a really nice gym for a community gym, but it's not like your typical goals gym where you have like unlimited equipment basically and everything you need. So I will be actually getting a local gym membership, kind of like a month to month basically membership here. Um, I haven't decided on the gym yet because the 24 hour fitness I used to go to here, which is kind of close to my parents' place, uh, closed down. So I'll have to find a new gym, but I'll kind of look around this weekend and see what's going on. And in the meantime, just kind of use their community gym. And luckily they also have like a really good swimming pool and a jacuzzi as well. So I'm going to be using mainly the jacuzzi at night. So kind of just getting my workouts in, in the morning, I actually just finished my workout right now and pretty much like right in front of Whole Foods and then kind of going about uh, going about my day. So, uh, and you can kind of replicate this system when you're traveling as well by simply um, getting an Airbnb, for example, or getting a more higher end hotel that has like a kitchen. Uh, that way you don't have to like eat out as often. And usually what I try to do is get like an Airbnb near a gym location as well. Uh, if you're staying there for prolonged periods of time, uh, a lot of times maybe a good idea because if you set up like an undulating periodization program, you typically kind of want to take like a week or at least I typically take a week or two off every about eight months or so from training altogether. So sometimes I try to schedule my trips during that time. That way you don't even have to uh, worry about you know, your workouts, et cetera, et cetera. And then plus you'll probably be walking a lot on trips. So it wouldn't be that big of a deal. You know, probably just help your recovery and overall uh, improve your longevity, especially if you combine those with deload weeks in your program as well. I'm like a huge believer in deload weeks. A lot of people may not do that, but I kind of saw a lot of benefit from it in terms of having no joint pain or anything of that sort. So I'm kind of like already 39 and have like no joint pain, no back pain, et cetera, et cetera, and stuff of that sort. But if you get an Airbnb unit, the good thing is, is um, you have like a fully accessible kitchen. And a lot of times what you could do is just eat kind of like a bigger meal first thing in the morning. Some people don't like eating in the morning that it may not work for them. And basically just kind of fast throughout the day and then eat a bigger meal at night or go out, you know, uh, and eat one meal during the middle of the day or something of that sort. That way you can kind of stay more on point uh, with your diet while traveling. And then obviously getting a place near a gym can help you do that as well. If you're not timing out your your trips uh, during those during those breaks in between transitioning to new programs, et cetera, et cetera. Another thing that's actually really worked well for me, and I mainly did this in Japan, honestly, is just having a lot of like, not a lot, but a few exercise bands, usually two pairs is more than enough and they're quite light and you can have them in your backpack very easily and just do like 20 minute, uh, 20 to 30 minute pump sessions every morning. Volume is probably gonna be a bit more important here. So I try to do those every day. Uh, just first thing in the morning before you head out, it's not like you're gonna be doing, uh, it's not like you're gonna be putting on any impressive gains or anything of that sort, but it's at least to maintain what you currently have so that um, when you return, it doesn't feel like you're really starting from scratch. Uh, but having said that, like sometimes taking some time off during trips could help you as well if you feel, especially if you feel super worn down and you're not allowing enough rest time in between your, your program, your workouts and just programming in general that, a lot, that allows enough biological adaptation. 
So typically you kind of run your central nervous system near the ground and then your kind of physiology would follow behind. So, but then that's also what you would want to then kind of look at in that situation is basically um, your program design, right? So you're getting enough recovery and then also what you're doing outside of the gym, uh, which is gonna be equally important, such as, you know, where is your energy going? Is my work taking up a lot of energy? You know, are my coworkers taking up a lot of energy or something to do with my finances or my personal life, et cetera, et cetera. So it's good to kind of look at if you're having chronic fatigue or not able to recover from workouts cor uh, correctly, it's good to always look at things in a, like a, it's cheesy to say, but like a holistic and broad perspective from various vantage points. If you really want to get to the root cause of especially chronic fatigue issues, okay? Probably a lot of variables play into that as well, such as diet, lifestyle choices, sleeping patterns, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I found worked well for me uh, is basically uh, just getting a place, usually an Airbnb, either doing w workouts with exercise bands or if I'm there for prolonged periods of time, just getting a place near a gym and just getting a, um, a partial gym membership. A lot of times, especially um, overseas, you know, taxis could be really uh, cheap. So you can just kind of get a taxi to a gym, you know, three or four days a week. Some places taxis could be a bit more expensive. So you have to factor that in. So maybe get a gym membership where you could literally just walk across the street or, you know, some kind of a place that actually has like a gym in it, such as a hotel, uh, the gy hotel gyms in the past used to really suck, but now I kind of see they're getting better and better. So you could have just enough, more than enough that you need to, to basically maintain uh, your progress. And that's good enough. Uh, that way you don't have to start from scratch when you return. And I just like being consistent as well and having those systems in place. I just kind of like doing that in general. So that's an option. And then Obviously I'm getting whole foods here. I'm just gonna buy like my normal, uh, some kind of variety of pasture raised meats, uh, organic potatoes and some kind of like organic variety of organic fruits and stuff of that sort. So I keep it super simple even when I travel as well. Um, and this is more kind of like a family thing. So I've been here many times already. So just knowing the environment helps also. So just some tips and uh, I hope it helps you guys. Okay.